Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, it's a happy new year, happy 2018. Um, and I'm just trying out this new background for the first time. So it should look like it's snowing in the background. There's a few different backgrounds apparently you can snow heavier and heavier still. And that's what the weather's been like here in Toronto. We had a very white Christmas. So as you're coming in, I'd like to welcome you and wish you a happy new year. Um, let's see. Okay, cool. There's a new screen here too that I'm checking out. So I can kind of see that some people are sending hearts. Okay, awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to be here with you. Uh, and if you're joining us for the first time, I'm Zara. Uh, of Yoga Goddess, and I will be guiding you through our full moon meditation. It happens to be a wolf moon this evening and a super moon. So uh, it's a very special full moon, plus it's the first full moon of the new year. All right, so as you're joining us, hello, Melody, happy new year. Nice to know it's your first time here, welcome. And Mary Richards, she says we have no snow in Alaska. Wow, that's crazy. Um, oh, and she says rejoice in that beautiful showering of love from Mother Earth. Thank you, Mary. Yes, it has been a beautiful white Christmas in Toronto. Um, and so it ha was, it's lovely. It really is quite beautiful. So as you're joining us, I'd love to know where in the world you are, and you can also share your name as you're coming on. That would be wonderful. Um, and I'm not sure how to show comments. Oh, yes. Okay. Cool. All right. I haven't used that before. So as you're coming in, let us know that you're joining us and where you're joining us from. I would love to know. Tonight's going to be um, a really interesting full moon live cast, a little bit different than what we usually do because we are releasing 2017 and uh, bringing in 2018. So we have Heidi from Toronto. Welcome, Heidi. And Victoria, I think, no, Victoria, Venice from Chicago. Welcome. And Sarah, ooh, Sarah's here in Australia, from Australia. Welcome, Sarah, it's so nice to have you with us. And who else do we have? Veronica from Costa Rica. We have Stella from the UK. Hello, Stella. And Erica, also Erica's first time here from Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> and I can't believe, yes, there's, there's snow in Michigan. Yes, just like in Toronto. And Julie, hello, Julie from Northern, Northern Virginia. Danielle from New York, happy new year. And Nato from New York as well. A very cold North Carolina, Patricia, welcome. And Melody from Alberta. Brianna from Australia, welcome. Romana from Slovakia, wow, this is great. Um, and Shakara Joseph, welcome. It's so nice to have you from Halifax. Excellent. And Kate. Kate says, thank you for sharing your awesomeness with us. Joining in from Georgetown near Austin, Texas. Excited about ringing in the new year. And yeah, can't believe Alaska doesn't have snow. And we do in Texas. Oh, my God. It's crazy pants <laughs> with the weather. All right. So welcome, welcome. Thank you, Margaret. Happy New Year. Margaret's joining us, too, from Brooklyn. And Nicole from Austin, Texas. Happy New Year. All right. This is awesome. So it looks like we're going to have a, a nice and active full moon this evening, full moon live cast. I'm, uh, I'm going to keep the snow on unless it gets distracting. You can let me know. So as I mentioned, tonight we'll be releasing 2017 and welcoming in 2018. So essentially, I'm going to be guiding you through 11 powerful questions that have been inspired by Leonie Dawson's. Um, and she has these great workbooks. Um, I can't remember exactly what they're called. Something about make your wonderful life workbooks. 
Um, and so we're going to be borrowing some of that inspiration for tonight. So what you're going to need, oops, is it showing here? No. Okay, let's try this again. You're going to need um, a pen, a journal, and a nice cup of tea, which I believe I forgot over there. So I'm going to grab my cup of tea. If you need to grab anything that you've forgotten, the checklist, pen, journal, cup of tea, and a candle to light, which is optional, but always nice to have uh, with the full moons. So I will be right back. And if you need to grab anything, go ahead and do that now. And I'm back. All right. So what I'd love to start off with tonight is, first of all, lighting our candles. So if you have a candle to light, um, you can bring that out. And if not, not to worry, we can work with the candle that I have. And what I would love for you to do as uh, we get started this evening is to really start to connect deeply within yourself. And what I'd like for, for you to pose as the first opening question, which we won't be journaling about, but um, what I'd like for, for you to do is to really sit with the question from a deep place, not from a surface place, not from a right off the top of your head place, but from the, the depths of your being, um, of what brings you here tonight. So as we, as we settle into ourselves and sink into that place of inquiry, um, I'm gonna light this candle and give you a moment to just focus on the flame. As we all connect here under the first full moon of 2018. So I just invite you to close your eyes. And I'm just going to put this candle away. Close your eyes, going inwards now can put one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest, and start to let your awareness drop down. Right down into your pelvic bowl, into the wisdom of the divine feminine, the wisdom of your womb. And from within the depth and space of this place inside you, your wisdom center. I want you to pose the question, what brings me here tonight? And listen for the answer. not from your mind, but from the very depths of your being. See if you can really tune in and listen. And as the inner voice brings you an answer, I'm going to turn off the snow. I'd like for you to share that answer with us. 
What brings you here tonight? What has moved you and called you to join us here under the first full moon of 27, 2018, which also happens to be a super moon, the first of two full moons in January, and the wolf moon. Hello, Carmen. Veronica says, seeking refuge in community. That's so beautiful, Veronica. Stella says, hope and the desire to travel within myself. Beautiful. Wendy, oh, Wendy, welcome. Wendy says, timing. Beautiful. Heidi says, a desire to step consciously and intentionally into this new year. Beautiful. Mary says the need for deep connection. Beautiful, I love that. For me, I heard wholeness. So that's what's bringing me here tonight. So as you uh, share your, your answers in the comments section, just know that tonight is really about sharing in community, about connecting all of us here in our virtual circle under the full moon. And it's gonna be a really powerful night to be in connection, to be in this community. So I'd love for all of us as we share, uh, and I have a few more answers coming in, which I'm gonna read out in a moment, to really hold because all of us are not only holding our own reason why, but in a way there's a mirroring happening because almost, you, know, you might hear yourself go, yeah, I'd like some of that. And yeah, that really resonates for me. So holding both your reason why, your why, as well as all of the women who are joining us virtually, literally, from all over the world. And, and that is just so beautiful and powerful. So let's hold that in our awareness. All right, so Danielle says, making the new year my year of finding myself and making my life what I want it to be, which is accomplishing some goals. Perfect. Romana says, the little girl in me who wants to be herself again. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, Romana. Erica says, knowledge. Kate says, merging with oneness and operating from this place, stepping out of the old and honoring the lessons. How perfect, Kate. Um, Kate, you've been really inspiring to me as I'm reading your other comments too. You're very in sync with what we're gonna be doing tonight. So a little bit of um, uh, like a preview, Kate is helping us get into. We're gonna be diving deep with our questions tonight into exactly that. Julie says, a deep sense of purpose, joy, fulfillment, love, and connection. Beautiful. Brianna says, compassion for self. Matto says, seeking the peace that comes from letting go and allowing the universe to work its magic. Thank you, Nata. That Natto, that's perfect. And also very much in line with what we're going to be doing tonight. Thea, welcome. Thea says, happy new year. And for me, more positivity and to lose a relationship. Cool. Thanks, Kate. And then Victoria says, finally letting myself be okay without having any blood family members and embracing the family that I've made on my journey. Beautiful. Carmen says, working with the synchronicity of the magic of the new year super moon and my cycle to manifest a fantastically successful year. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. So let's just take a moment. Uh, I just gonna read one more. Patricia says, desire for wisdom, 
increase in intuition, especially in a couple of areas of my life. Okay, so now we've heard some of, lots actually, of our other fellow goddesses, uh, wise and you have your own wise so I just like you to um, bring your arms into a circular shape let me just see if I can see what I'm doing what you can see and what you can do is place your <laughs> your left hand which is I don't know if it's showing up for you as left on your screen but your left hand up and your right hand down and just imagine and let them rest sort of by your sides. Push this back. All right. And so left hand down, um, sorry, right hand down, left hand up. So left for receiving, right for giving. And just imagine that you are in circle with all of these beautiful women whether you're joining us live right now or on the replay, I'd like for you to join in this visualization of sitting in circle with all of our sisters, all of the goddesses who are present here in flesh and blood and all of the women that have led you to be here, the wombs that have brought you forward into this world, into this life, standing behind you. And just imagine that all of us are here holding hands in this divine circle of sisterhood. Literally sitting all over the earth. And let's just connect with our sisters, receiving the hand in your palm open on the left and giving with your palm down on the right. Visualizing all of us here present, gathering tonight under the full wolf moon, the first moon of 2018, with 364 days ahead of us. And now I want you to gather your intention and all of the intentions into your heart. And holding all of this for yourself and for all of your sisters, all of us who are gathered here tonight. And let yourself feel held and connected, known, loved, and understood as the goddess, the woman, the divine feminine being that you are. All right, so let's get started. I'm just gonna have some of my tea. So we're gonna start, as I mentioned, we're gonna be journaling tonight. So make sure you have your journal handy. And let's see, we're gonna be diving into 11 questions this evening. And what we're gonna be doing is uh, journaling and sharing. Oops, okay, so I'm losing connection with 
<laughs> so journaling and sharing. Um, sorry, one second. Is this working now? All right. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna check this off. All right. So we're gonna be diving in, as I said, to our 11 questions. So have your journal ready. And we're gonna be working together and journaling in our own journals. And then at some points, I will be asking for some shares. Um, we won't do a ton of them because uh, we wanna kind of keep in the rhythm. So let's start off with the first question. And we're gonna have, um, Let's see, so we have 11 questions. Um, I'm gonna give us about two minutes each uh, for each question, approximately, uh, maybe a little bit less, depending on how we're doing for time and shares. So the first question that we're gonna be diving into is what I discovered about myself in 2017 was. So again, the intention is for us to release 2017 so that can, we can really make space as we kind of like wrap up 2017, put a bow on it and take what we want, what, we're, what we want to harvest um, or, you know, like what we're taking out of 2017 and kind of bringing up with us in 2018 and what we want to leave behind. So there's both elements that we're going to be exploring tonight um, so that we can really step into 2018 with a fresh new beginning. So, all right, pens ready. Let's start with our first question. What I discovered about myself in 2017 was... And don't worry if, um, you know, you don't need to write in full long sentences. You can write in point forms. Really just let's get that stream of consciousness going. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, next question. I know myself better now because. So each question is going to build on the one prior. So again, don't worry about having perfect or complete answers. Uh, let's just dive into number two. I know myself better now because.
And if anyone would like to share, I know myself better now because, please share. Okay, next question, and this one will share our answers because it's an easier one. I am most, oh no, I just deleted it. Okay, I am most proud of, you can share that. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. Okay, so let's see. We'll do that in a second. Kate says, I've discovered I'm not the chaotic experiences of the past and much more. Beautiful. Veronica says, I took time out to rest and grieve and to let go of people who weren't good for me. I was able to accept that I needed support. Beautiful. Carmen says, after losing my mom this summer, oh, so sorry for your loss, Carmen, I realized so much of my behavior was attached to my admiration of her and I'd abandoned my true self long ago. But her being gone made me reassess who I was without her. What a gift. All right. Sarah Ross says, I learned how to be present and in the moment rather than stuck in my own mind and thoughts. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to try and write this again. Let's see if this will show me. Um, no? Okay, so our next question, which is question number three, I am most proud of. So if you can't see it. I'm going to try it again. I am most proud of. It will work. Okay. All right, so let's see. Kate says, I'm most proud of delivering my baby at home with my husband and unsuspecting neighbor. He was perfect and healthy after that intense experience. How powerful, thank you, Kate. Julie says, my courage to heal and to show up as vulnerable and authentic in my daily life. That is definitely something to be proud of. Thank you, Julie. Mary says, I know myself better now because I can love ferociously and still ask for what I need and let go of things that are toxic. I am most proud of honoring my intuition and listening to my inner wisdom. Thank you, Mary. Danielle says, I'm proud that I discovered most of my unhappiness came from me getting in my own way. I've been getting over my doubts and fears and just trying things. Beautiful. Okay. So our next question, hopefully we'll show now. <laughs> yes. Okay. 
Um, I was most challenged by, number four. I was most challenged by. And please share. Okay. I was most challenged by. Shadia says, I was most challenged by people asking me to be patient and dismissing what I needed for myself. Thank you, Shadia. Robin says, I'm most proud of the me that was here the whole time under all the layers. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you, Robin. I was most challenged by. Anyone else want to share before we move on? Shakara says, oops, where am I? <laughs> okay, I have, I'm most proud of. Robin says, I'm most proud of the me. Oh, no, that was the same one, sorry. Um, here we go. I'm now seeing the screen. Okay. Mary says, I'm most challenged by forces trying to negate my being and purpose. And Shakara says, I'm most proud of the space I've created for me to feel, to allow myself to practice self-care and self-love. And I was most challenged by strange, strained family relationship after a family death. Thank you, Shakara. And Robin says, my husband's spiritual blocks. <laughs> yeah, I can relate. Okay. So let's go on to question number five which is, I hope you can see it, even though it was hard, I am grateful for the experience. Even though it was hard, I am grateful for the experience of, and fill in the blank.
Robin says, even though it was hard, I'm grateful for the chronic pain that eventually led to a spiritual awakening. Thank you so much for sharing. And Julie says, I was most challenged by limited communicators in my life who weren't able to meet me where I was and by a loving relationship that suddenly ended because the person had his own healing to do and fully honor that it wasn't about something being wrong with me. Beautiful, Julie. And Brianna, she says that she was most challenged by my mis her miscarriage and the difficulty of people to acknowledge this. That is definitely a very painful experience. Thank you so much for sharing, Brianna, being so brave. Okay. Mary says, even though it was hard, I'm grateful for physical recovery this year because it led me to a network of amazing healers and their wisdom, also for discovering my own healing wisdom. Perfect. Okay. Number six. This is a good one. I let go of. I let go of. Hmm. Let's try that again. No, it doesn't want to show. Number six, I let go of. Okay. Number six, I let go of. Let me show. Okay. Victoria says, I let go of toxic relationships. Stella says, I let go of negativity and anger towards those who have hurt me in the past. I agree. Oh, Veronica says it's showing. Okay, so it's just not showing for me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that helps. Okay. And Stella says, I let go of negativity and anger towards those who have hurt me in the past. I think I just said that. Okay. Um, oh, Nacho says, pregnancy. Having gone through an extremely hard pregnancy in 2016 that resulted in a stillborn boy, I was plagued by fears of something happening to my daughter while in the womb. Nacho, thank you so much for sharing. I think that was, uh, even though it was hard, I'm grateful for. Okay. And Mary says, I let go of a relationship that was not serving me, and I let go of needing my body to be perfect. Yeah. I think we can all relate to that one. Heidi says, I let go of the fear of poverty and financial failure that was keeping me small. Beautiful. Elizabeth Ingrams, welcome. I let go of expectations of outcomes. Beautiful. Nacho says, I let go of sadness over the loss of our son. I'm allowing him to be at peace. Beautiful. Robin says, I let go of needing to control the reaction of others. I let go of fear. I let go of thinking I am better than others. I let go of thinking I'm worse. Beautiful. And Brianna says, I let go of expectations I put on others. I love that. Okay. Thea says, 
I let go of everything that hurts and disappointing. Beautiful. Number seven, I learned these beautiful lessons. Number seven, I learned these beautiful lessons. Okay, I learned these beautiful lessons. Who would like to share? Sarah says, how to be grateful for the little things in life. Shadia says, the power of budgeting. I learned these beautiful lessons. Nacho says, trust the universe. Yes. And Bia says, I can see the moon right now. Beautiful. Robin says, I learned a little bit of how beautiful life is when I do what I want. Yes. Veronica says, no one's going to love me if I don't love myself. Yes. Brianna says, how to speak and act on my truth. And Elizabeth says, I learned to treasure and put my health first. Beautiful. Kate says, I have so many for this one. The art of presence, patience, patience and understanding, openness to love, that I'm not my body or thoughts and that I can consciously create and choose both. I learned what alone and God were and what walking with Jesus meant. I learned how to follow love. Beautiful. Okay, number eight. These dreams, and they can be big or small, came true in 2017. These dreams, big or small, came true in 2017.
Okay. These dreams, big or small, came true in 2017. Who would like to share? These dreams, big or small, came true in 2017. Robin says, I discovered close female friendships I didn't know were waiting for me. Beautiful. Nato says, realizing the creative power within me. She is here. Her name is Sarah Isabella. Beautiful. I love that. You made me think of my something for me. All right. Veronica says, I moved to Costa Rica, started a not-profit tribe of city healers, started working as an independent contractor, and had a blissful beach birthday surrounded by friends. Lovely. Beautiful. Okay. So we're going to, um, we're going to take the next three questions, or two questions, I should say. Um, we're going to write for two questions straight. All right, so, and they kind of, this one kind of uh, is a jumping off point. Oh, okay, hold on. First, we'll read a couple more. So Carmen says, I started my art products business. My relationship with my love interest became closer and more intimate. Beautiful. Mary says, renovating my home space to be a reflection of peace and tranquility, working with young minds each day, living close to and within nature. Elizabeth says, I united with my partner at a deep level without knowing I need something else or someone different. I started a woman's peace group. Beautiful. And Sarah says, I said goodbye to the old fearful Sarah and welcomed a new positive one. I felt a new spiritual connection to myself. I felt free and people even started to comment and notice differences in me. That made me feel amazing. Beautiful. Okay, so let's move on. Um, to number nine, which is 2017 led me to. 2017 led me to. And it's purposely open-ended. And you can keep going with that one and then start to write with number 10, 
which is in order to feel good about 2017 and move forward into 2018, I first need to rant about this. So I'm gonna give you two minutes for that one. In order to feel good about 2017 and move forward into 2018, I first need to rant about this. wrap that one up okay and then finally we're gonna end our journaling with our bonus question what is my soul howling for in 2018? What is my soul howling for in 2018? All right, anyone wants to share? Thea says spiritual freedom. Beautiful. Carmen says, deeper spirituality, freedom, bravery with working in my gifts. Beautiful. Stella says, my soul is howling for knowledge and learning, 
continued good health and new adventures. Beautiful. So as we are sitting in all of this cultivation that we've just done and all this you know, literally cultivating and culling all of the, the lessons and the gifts and the beauty and the challenges of 2017. I just want to invite all of us to just take a moment and really feel the fullness of everything that you've lived and everything that we've all lived for this year. And let's just take a moment to bask in all of it in the wholeness of all of 2017, from January to February, March and April, May and June, July and August, September, October, November and December, all of it. Just let yourself feel and bask in all of the beauty, all of the lessons, in all of the ways you've grown and stretched and loved and lost and become more of you and brought you to where you are and who you are right here and now. And just take a deep belly breath and connect with all of that. And I'd love to know how do you feel? What was tonight's New Year's live cast like for you? And then I'll just read a few more of the comments that came in of what is my soul howling for? Elizabeth says, renewed energy and health. Robin says, sacred space around me always, or at least at home, love, connection, openness, healing, peace, opening a healing practice, and a daily soul practice. Mary says, a safe, loving, compassionate world for my son and all children, all beings, new adventures with friends to deepen, connection, a partner in crime to journey with me in all things brave, health and resiliency for our planet. Beautiful. Nicole says, to stand in my true self, to return to joy. And Brianna says, the strength and courage to continue my IVF journey and peace and compassion for myself, whatever the outcome this year. Beautiful. Okay, so how do you feel? And what was this New Year's live cast like for you? I would love to know. I'm just gonna turn this thing back on. What was tonight's live cast like for you? Let's see. Kate says, energized and ready. Thank you. I love the circle at the beginning. I felt a lot of energy rolling around my body during that. Beautiful. Thank you, Kate. Who else would like to share? How are you feeling? Mary says, I feel honored and alive and so much gratitude. Beautiful. Thank you, Mary.
How is it feeling to walk into 2018 after tonight's live cast under the full wolf moon? Robin says, I'm grateful I stumbled into this live cast and group. Sarah says, I feel so privileged. This sharing between us is all so powerful. Beautiful. Yes, it is. Thank you, Sarah. Elizabeth says, I really enjoyed this and hope to catch up on the replay because she couldn't get line on the at the beginning. Yes, there will be a replay. Julie says, vitality, adventure, joy, and love to continue to find and build my tribe of women friends to meet the love of my life. I think that's in response to what is my soul howling for? Beautiful. All right. So I just want to quickly tell you about when our live next live cast is going to be. Uh, well, Carmen says, very reflective. Help me put 2017 into perspective. And I feel stronger about 2018. Beautiful. So I want to tell you how we can go deeper with this, especially as we're moving into uh, 2018. Um, and there's actually a blue moon coming. So I'd love for you to join us on January 31st for our first, first blue moon live workshop. It's going to be a two hour workshop where we're going to be setting our intentions as part of um, our moon goddess program. So it's a two hour workshop to set our fertile feminine intentions for 2018. And it is free for all moon goddess members. So if you're not currently a moon goddess member, um, moon goddess, whether you're trying to conceive or heal period problems, it's my number one fertility yoga program. Um, and it has basically been followed by women in over 25 countries all over the world. And it's helped so many women heal their relationship with their heart and their womb, uh, some for fertility, others for other reproductive health challenges. So what we're going to be doing, um, and so I just give you a quick understanding of Moon Goddess works essentially through yoga and meditation and the connection with the divine feminine. So it's a powerful program combining all those elements of yoga, meditation, connection with the moon through visualization and charting your cycle. I know some of you are working with me privately. Some many of you are in the program. Um, so the workshop is going to be offered uh, for moon goddess members only. And what we're going to be doing under the full blue moon is setting our intentions together. So it's the first time I've been I'm going to be doing this live. Um, and, uh, it's going to be a really powerful and auspicious time. So if you feel like part of your journey is to let go and surrender, that's really at the essence of what moon goddess helps you do to connect with the divine feminine and to stop trying to control everything. Um, whether it's to heal reproductive health challenges or it's to get pregnant, both healing and pregnancy happen through the body and not the mind. And that's what Moon Goddess helps you do, is really um, heal the relationship that you have with your female body, connect in a much deeper and profound way. Um, and whether that's establishing healthy cycles, bringing your period back online, um, trying to reduce pain or PMS, or trying to conceive, all these different ways of healing are addressed through the program. So if you are not a member and you'd like to join us for the Blue Moon Workshop on January 31st, then just check out Moon Goddess online and you can do that at my website at yogagoddess.ca forward slash moon goddess. And, you know, I really truly believe and it's something that is very uh, top of mind for me this year in 2018. Um, as just to share a very personal part of my journey. Um, I've just released a five-year relationship. And so I'm also walking into making my dreams come true in 2018. And so I really wanna to stand together with all of you um, in stepping into 2018 with a powerful intention 
that you can align with your desires, that you can align with the divine feminine and your own source energy and your desires and line them up so that they are actually in sync versus in conflict with each other. Instead of feeling the lack and the feeling of not being able to have what you want, but to really start to create that feeling inside of you that you are a match actually for what you're asking for, as opposed to feeling like you just are constantly living in lack, which can only attract more lack. We need to learn how to vibrate into being attractive, essentially a match for what we desire. So that is what we're going to be doing in 2018 and under the full blue moon with my full support, uh, setting our intentions together. So I'd love for you to join me and to join Moon Goddess uh, under the blue moon for the 31st of January. Um, I'm just going to check if there's any questions. Uh, Kate says, sending you extra love and light. Thank you so much, Kate. Happy New Year to all of you. Thea says, thank you, all the best, and be blessed. Nicole says, I feel positive about the new year. It was good to reflect and realize that the challenges of 2017 also taught me valuable lessons to take forward into 2018. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful. And Julie says, I feel hopeful, peaceful, and supported. And Danielle says, I have a great feeling about 2018. So do I. So thank you, thank you so much for all of you for being here live and for those who will catch up on the replay. Have a beautiful, beautiful beginning to 2018. And I hope to be with you again under the blue moon for our first workshop um, of setting intentions live in uh, for Moon Goddess. Take care and bye for now. Sending you lots of love.